Monster taming as a genre was near its peak in the late 90s to early 2000s. Between games and series like Pokemon, Digimon, Card Capture, Sakura, Robopon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Bakugan, Beyblade... Well, maybe, I don't know man, there's like a 90% chance these things are like actually alive. But after that period, it kind of just fizzled out. Like sure, we got stuff like Fossil Fighters, Yokai Watch, Monsuno, Invisimals! You know, if uh, that's your jam. We got plenty of new series, but like things hadn't really taken off like it did in those early years. And then Pokemon did a huge <laughs> oopsie, oh god. But this did lead to a lot of fans being more open to the idea of games outside of the Pokemon series. And lucky for them, a ton of these new monster taming games just came out around this time. To either give their own take on the typical Pokemon formula, or to experiment to make something completely new. A game I like to think started this little revolution was Nexamon Extinction, due to it being released around a year later in 2020. Though most would attribute the start of this boom in the genre to Tim Tim a Pokemon-like monster tamer that centered around the idea of making an MMO with the usual Pokemon formula, which is something fans had wanted for like decades? Oh shit! Yeah, I, I never really played Tim Tim for myself, but watching the ravenous fans go at it over this game was kind of crazy. Especially with the term Pokemon killer being thrown around, which may be one of the stupidest things anyone could ever say about these games, as they are not trying to do that. And besides, most of these games aren't even based on Pokemon, but on the things that Pokemon's based on. One of these games to come out during this boom was Coromon, a game that took direct inspiration from Pokemon and other RPGs like Zelda and Golden Sun, which you can definitely see with how much more puzzle-focused a lot of these areas are, and no, of course, the big push hand. It was also said to have a much deeper story than Pokemon, and like... Yeah... The game was developed by Tracksoft and published by Freedom Games. It was released in March 2022 to pretty good success. People liked it and they had a lot of fun with all the different Coromon, the story, and the variety of game modes it featured. But Tragsoft wasn't satisfied, and a few months ago they released a large update to the game that added two new Coromon lines, a name change to one of the typings, a new post-game battle facility with three cool ways to play it, and even a reworked story that added in new elements, characters, and was overall way more detailed. You know, I was actually quite satisfied with the game at launch, and I felt it had plenty of good content, and I did like the story, Though, I admit that the finale did have some kinks that needed to be buffed out. So this update pretty much just perfected the game in my eyes, making it a much better experience and for free! That's like my favorite price! Though, that's not to say this game ain't worth the cash. No matter if you're playing on PC, Switch, Xbox, or PlayStation, or hell, even your mobile devices, I think Cormon is absolutely worth it. Though, I may have jumped the gun a bit. If you're someone who's already played this game, then yeah, you know all of this, but to you who hasn't, allow me to help you choose your next diamond in the rough. So, as mentioned before, Coromon is a Pokemon-like monster taming RPG, and as such, we have a team that consists of the six monsters to battle for our player character. Now, like Pokemon, these monsters also have different typings, different abilities, different stats, and different moves, but here is where things get quite a bit more interesting. Starting off with the types, it takes the basics we all know and love and twists them into a unique way. For instance, there is no plant-based typing. Instead, its role is being replaced by an ice type in the elemental chart. Which, you know, honestly threw me for a loop the first time I played it, but honestly, I kind of got used to it after a while. Ice is a pretty good replacement for plant in the usual rock, paper, scissors triangle. And aside from that, we also have skill exclusive types like Poison, Slash, or Magic. Types that do have a place on the chart, but only in an offensive sense. The abilities in this game also work really differently, with them actually having levels to them. If we had to use Pokemon as an example, imagine you had a Wingle with Drizzle. But when you reach level 25, instead of evolving into Pelipper, you now have the option to keep it a Wingle, but now with Drizzle Plus which gives Drizzle a much longer term limit, as well as an added bonus effect. Then, what you would have in Coromon terms would be a Tattle. 
except in Tattle's case, it actually has three stages, meaning you can get Drizzle Plus Plus, which is even better. This gives lower stage evolutions a more interesting role in combat, while also keeping the evolutions role with how they have better stats. And hell, in Coromon, if you evolve a Mon and decide you want to go back, you actually can. With a pill. I have no idea how this works, and I'm frankly too scared to ask. A new stat added in Coromon is called Stamina, which is what powers all your moves instead of the individual PP like in Pokemon. Meaning that you had to play smart with your pool of stamina without just spamming the strongest stuff you got. Also, you get stat points alongside your usual level ups, allowing your Coromon to specialize in certain stats of your choice. And look, I'm not a competitive man, but I love that shit. Coromon's combat is really well done, in the way that it takes the classic style you're used to, but adds some more complexity to it, which was honestly a ton of fun. I especially enjoyed the stamina system, making me really think about how to use my moves. But my biggest problem is, you know, kind of the skill types. You know, it's not really the inherent idea of them, of course, I actually really like them in that regard. But there are certain Coromon who rely on skill type attacks for their movesets, which means they don't have the ability to use stab, or same type attack bonus. Yeah, if you got a basic type snake mon who only uses, you know, skill type poison moves, yeah, it's not that huge of a deal, but it kind of bothers me that some mons are just kind of missing out on that extra bit of damage in an otherwise really well-balanced game. But yeah, speaking of balance, I kind of threw that out the window. You see, the game has quite a few difficulty options, including the usual casual, normal, hard, stupid hard, and custom, which is what I use for my playthrough. To make all the battles as hard as super hard, but with the quality of life features of casual, so, you know, I didn't have to worry about running to a health station while I'm in the middle of a dungeon. I love customizable difficulty like this, especially when it's something the player can tweak at any time for their own enjoyment. In my mind, there is no definitive difficulties when playing a game, and I think all games should have these types of options, at least to a certain extent. That is to say that it doesn't conflict with what a game is trying to be. Like Dark Souls, you can't be Dark Souls if there's a difficulty option that makes it impossible to die. That's like the whole point of the game. But hey, maybe a difficulty or at least an option to make dodging a little easier may be a nice change. I, I don't know why I'm bringing Dark Souls into this conversation. I only played like two minutes of a demo like eight years ago, but speaking on custom difficulty settings, Oh boy, here is where you can activate all kinds of crazy stuff. We got Nuzlocks, randomizers, and if you're looking up to mix up your next playthrough, you should try out my favorite, the Swirmy mode, that changes all the Coromon to the mascot Swirmy. I could have swore this was in the base game already. I certainly tried my best to find whatever the wiki was talking about, but no, this was cut and reintroduced back into this new content update. So thanks for bringing it back. Could have sworn the Swirmy changed colors in the cut version though, I don't know, maybe in a new game or an update. You do have skins for the little guy's titan battles, which hey, that's pretty cool. Skins are basically just appearance changes for a few Coromon and the human character that can be bought with jewels that are earned through playing through weekly challenges or by just buying them if you're playing the mobile release. These skins range from fun recolors, to clothing options, to major design overhauls of certain mons, with my favorite being the reimagining of the beta design for Megalobite. I love me some muscle men, but I was missing that dad bod, and after my first playthrough I was kinda hoping for a way to maybe switch between the two looks, and the team did me one better and fused them into the perfect design! <sighs> no notes, he's beautiful. This, this, Coromon 2, this just needs to be the design from now on. It's perfect. And most of the skins even carry over their shiny colorations as well. I know the microtransactions can be a total drag, but with how cheap the mobile release is, I can understand the need for them. And hey, they are earnable in game. Takes a while and sometimes the missions don't work, which you know, screws with the weekly bonus, but hey, they are earnable. Kinda wish whole lines got more skins instead of just one Mon being the only one to get one, but hey! 
I don't know, it, it's fine I guess, it doesn't really bother me that much. But speaking on shinies, Coromon does something really interesting with them. You see, shinies and Coromon actually come in two flavors, a potent and a perfect. The main difference being the rarity of each form and how much of a stat boost they give them on. In Coromon, the potential stat is basically how good this Coromon is compared to others of its species. With 1 to 14 being average, 15 to 20 being above average, and 21 being perfect. The stat boosts are not exactly needed to beat the game, but they could give you an edge in online competitions. But hey, what if you want the stats of a certain form, but the color of another? Well, that's simple, friend, as you're able to change the coloration in the menu. It won't affect the Coromon stats, of course, and you still need to catch a perfect one or a potent one to use those forms. But hey, it's still cool you can do it. And if you got a Coromon that's on the precipice of being potent or perfect, you can actually bring in this guy who will bump up the stat by one or two points and help you get a stronger form. Though if you're at 19, the chance he bumps it up to 21 are pretty much minuscule. So, you know, that wasn't a fun grind and I kind of gave up on it because really, fuck that. The perfect stone in the post game is fine. You just, you just gotta wait for it. The visuals of Coromon are top notch though, they're this beautiful pixel art with so many gorgeous colors, and frankly, really impressive visual effects. The little chibi characters are straight out of the GBA to DS era of games, which I really appreciated. Though I wasn't really sure about the little emoticons at first, but they really grew on me as the game went on. I love those DS sprites, but they are not the most expressive in the world. So evolving the whole explanation mark, Explain me. Oh my god. So evolving the whole exclamation. Oh fuck. So evolving the whole exclamation mark thing into actual facial reactions. Nailed it. Is a warranted and honestly pretty neat change. The music was honestly. I, I say honestly so much, but I'm being really honest here. The music is really good. I really enjoyed the whole intro piece with the flutes and the percussion that kind of just Disney magics its way into this sick guitar riff. Oh, I'm not a music guy. Let me know if any of that is wrong. But man, I just love this shit. It's so good. And I also just loved the theme that played in the snowy mountains. It's so triumphant and it really feels like you're moving your way towards the big bad boss of the game. In a sense, you are, as this is one of the later parts of the game. And you know I enjoy some jingle bells! I can see why Gym Leader Ed uses this as his outro, which he's a fantastic source for all things monster taming. If you ever want to deep dive into this genre, hit up his channel. And hey, he even made it into the game as a sort of challengeable NPC, which is cool. Th though I kind of forgot to fight him. And if we're being 100%, I might just kick his ass for stealing my drip, but it's still cool. My favorite song though was probably the Titan theme. I can't really show these fights cause spoilers, but the music speaks for itself. I love this rock and battle theme. Though, speaking of spoilers, it's time for story. Skip here to avoid all story spoilers for Coromon. If you've somehow not played this game yet, uh, then you need to either skip this shit or put it on pause. J just go play it, I'll be here when you come back. The story of Coromon begins with our character, good old Shubei, as they're woken up by their mother as it's time for them to start their new job at the Lux campus, a research facility that studies all things related to Coromon and the world itself. As our hero is introduced to the campus and its many inner workings and facilities, they are also met by the man in charge of the campus, Professor Rigel, and they learn more about what their role is here at PUT ON A LAB COAT! Oh, Jesus, dude, all right, all right. They make you do this every time you go into a lab, and like, I get it's a science safety thing and all, 
but I'm here like 15 minutes at most just to get my mission and leave. Like they even yell at you when you're already wearing one. I guess researchers are color coded or something? But anyway, the professor tells us about Project Chimera. Basically, this world was created by elemental types, and the ones in charge of those types are the Titans. Our job is to obtain the essence of each of the elements from said Titans so the campus can research them more thoroughly. And considering the friendly nature between humans and the Titans, this should be no problem at all! Three, two, one... And problems then arise due to a mysterious group of blue men... <laughs> no, not blue men, like blue humanoids. But basically, these guys start terrorizing the Titans and begin corrupting the planet's elements with one of their own, Crimsonite. These aliens are known as the Wubbians, and their element seems to be able to give them unprecedented powers alongside the ability to gain more strength by corrupting other elements. They use this to create Crimsonite Coromon, which are strong against non-Crimsonite Coromon and have very powerful Crimsonite attacks. As you can probably guess, the Crimson Coromon are another take on Shadow Pokemon which was introduced in Colosseum and XD. This idea is shockingly underused in its home series of Pokemon, so I'm always excited to see it appear in other series. And Crimsonite Coromon are a great reinvention of the idea. Though for those of you who are confused, yeah, pre-update this element was called Dark Magic. I can kind of see why they changed it as they already have a magic skill type, and, you know, I always thought it was kind of odd that the two had nothing to do with each other, and I guess the developers agreed. Well, after the Wubbians trash a research station by the Thunder Titan, put all up, call, WHERE ARE YOUR PEOPLE'S PRIORITIES?! Chubei is sent up the tower with no time to spare, as they have to make it there before the Wubbians corrupt the Titan at the s ARE YOU SHITTING ME?! If you walk through, you have to solve my puzzle. This place is in danger! Somebody was kidnapped and corrupted! Well, that's not really my problem. After making his way through the tower, Chu Bei finally reaches the Titan, who's pissed off about the human's delayed action against the Crimsonite, and it's like, Preach, brother, I'm listening. And after a quickie, as in battles, by the way, he fills us in, as in fills us with knowledge, by the way, about the situation we're currently in. Actually, that one's fine. Basically, he needs us to collect the essences of his brothers and sisters to try and save them from the corruption, as well as fuse their powers together to cleanse the world of the alien plague. Sweet, that's basically what I was doing anyway. Is there anything else we need to know? Oh, uh, well, there is this small thing. Sure, what's up? It's just, I noticed you didn't wear a lab coat, and I think you should really take lab safety a bit more seriously. Or with the Thunder Essence down, Chu Bei then makes his way across the planet to find the other Titans, including joining a spooky cult to make his way into the spirit world where the Ghost Titan lives, infiltrating a desert town to uncover a Wubian conspiracy, which leads him to the Sand Titan, mastering a martial art so that he can crack the boulders to make his way to the Fire Titan, and then helping a small snow village prepare for their festival? Huh. This is actually really nice. Though I kind of feel like I'm forgetting so- OH SHIT! The Wubians manage to halfway corrupt the Ice Titan, and after saving it, it's pretty much confirmed that the Water Titan has been fully taken over, and now it's time to make a final stand against the Wubians. Heading into the Water Temple, Chu Bei is challenged by the Wubians' elemental power, and is almost defeated by them, but- uh, Hold on, I gotta take this. Hello? Hey, Shubei, I just wanted to let you know if this is about a coat, I swear to God. No, no, we're just pulling an in-game. <laughs> With the campus coming in to capture the majority of the Wubbians, Chubby and his Coromon head straight into the main temple to defeat the corrupted Water Titan. It's a tough fight, well, actually this may have been one of the easiest ones since I kinda overprepared with all my stat lowering techniques, but yeah, sure, story-wise, it was a hard fought fight that we were only able to win with the help of the other Titan essences and the Water Titan itself fighting from the inside. Shubei is then able to succeed in defeating the Wubbians and then combining all the essences, resetting the world back to its uncorrupted state. 
Afterwards, we're called into the campus to see that they had taken care of the Wubbians and the corrupted humans for the time being. Apparently, the reason behind the Wubbians' actions were due to them trying to convert the Koromon planet into one more hospitable to them, meaning that they wanted to take the planet for themselves. As to why, we're really not sure, but with plenty of questions and so few answers, the boys at Lux Solus decide that they need to find them. In space! But that's for the sequel. For now, that's the story. Honestly, it's a really good story. I know I was kind of memeing on it a bit, but like, I really do like it. Especially all the different towns with their own stories and characters. It kind of felt like arcs of a TV show. It was really intriguing. And the Wubbians are a very interesting concept, reminding me a lot of the Dinarians and Fossil Fighters. Though this time they can speak backwards all Zatanna style. Which, hey, I thought was pretty neat. The Titans were so cool. I love their mannerisms and how they're so matter-of-fact about the whole Essence Collection thing. But when something like the Wubbians Crimsonite comes in, they freak out. It's like gods realizing they too aren't untouchable. And they were forced to put trust in our hero, which is, you know, pretty interesting. I'm not sure about the whole deeper story than Pokemon bit. They said this a lot, you know, during interviews and stuff like that, and it's kind of eh, to be honest. Like, yeah, it's a great story, don't get me wrong. But is this really any more deeper than something like Scarlet and Violet? It's definitely deeper than Sword and Shield, and that is probably what they're referring to. But it's just that bit that's like, y'all are just trying to make the game look better on a resume. Which I respect, if we're being real, I've, I've been having to do that recently. But better story than Pokemon? Oh, definitely, but only like some of the games. Again, Sword and Shield, yeah. And that's Coromon, a really interesting mix of different RPG and adventure games that blends into a super smoothie of a game. They even put some sprinkles in there, that's so neat. If you get a chance, I highly recommend Goromon. The gameplay is really fun, the music and visuals are a treat for the senses, the story was a great time, not to mention, pretty damn funny, which I always appreciate. If you're looking for a new RPG to quench your thirst, then this smooth, uh, game is for you. Alright, let's look at my teams. First off, we got my boy, Thumpback. Named after the Whale Skylander, this beast was a beast on the battlefield. I can't even look at the other starters if we're being real. I love this shark so much, especially his potent color. On my first playthrough in this one, I grinded the starting area for this guy. Even if the other two were perfect, I didn't care. I wanted my Orca, especially with that skit. No, not that one. It's cool, and I can see why you think that, but I'm really talking- There's my boy! Spikes was so fun. Sure, because of how skill types work, they didn't get to use stab all that much, but those poison and defense dropping abilities made them a valued team member. And when I min-max those stats to be exclusively attack and speed, ultimate destruction. Ha <laughs> ha! My boys sucked for most of the game. Oh god. Can't believe how long it took you to get a physical lightning move. Also, I got pissed off with how much time I spent trying to get you to perfect. Green and black are my favorite colors. I needed my three-headed thunder dog to be those colors. Ah, at least you got that stone in the post game. Also, I love you guys. You're so cute. And when you get the right moves, you were a menace. Ha <laughs> ha. Dusty. I like him. Yeah, I think I prefer the other sand type reptile, but I like Dusty and I use him again. He's, you know, he's cool. I don't know. I'm sorry, man. I love you, but I really ain't got that much to say. Velvita, the liquid gold. Didn't get to keep his cool confetti skin after he evolved, but he's a mac and cheese reference, so he's based. Even though I don't eat that stuff much anymore. I've been trying to do better about eating, you know? Creepin'. Every time I tried to use his base form, I just couldn't get into him. His game was just not my own. But the Crimsonite form? Hell yeah, I love this guy. I'm so glad he added him in the update. The perfect final member for the final stretch of the game. If you played Coromon, link your teams down below. I'd love to see them. And I'd love to see you support the channel in whatever way you're comfortable with. And I'll see you all next time when we talk about... I don't know, something.
I'm sorry, that that last video was super long, and I'm still kind of recouping from it, but I got more stuff I want to do. We're going to do it. If any of the Coromon devs are listening, that Rocket Rhino would be really cool to bring back. I'm not, I'm not like blackmailing or, you know, begging or anything. I'm just putting it out there. Rocket Rhino. Rocket Rhino. That's so cool. 